For this lesson, we'll be going over source transformation. It's a very helpful and very powerful technique. Source transformation is when a voltage source with internal series resistance can be represented by an equivalent circuit of a current source with internal parallel resistance and vice versa. And we'll go over in the problems of what this means more and how you can manipulate this. So you're probably thinking, why are we going over source transformation? Well, there's a lot of benefits behind it. One, you're able to take a Thevenin equivalent model and convert it to a Norton equivalent model and vice versa very quickly. So if you're strong with one technique, you can easily convert it to the next technique and vice versa. Next, you're able to find a circuit simplification. So anytime you have several sources such as different uh, current sources and voltage sources that are going off different branches, you may be able to reduce them down just to all current sources or all voltage sources to go ahead and do your uh, mesh analysis or nodal analysis. Also, you can do source reduction. Take multiple uh, current sources and mo or multiple voltage sources and narrow them down to just a single source and a single internal resistance. Next, it's useful too for determining ideal battery configuration and power supply configurations. This lesson, we're not gonna go in great detail on uh, battery characteristics and configurations. However, by knowing source transformation, it'll make it easier to do those problems later on. So for this first one, I'm gonna start off with something very simple. I'm gonna start off with one current source in parallel with a resistor. And we're gonna say that current source is 20 milliamps. And we'll say the resistor is 1K. So we're gonna to wanna to convert this to a Thevenin theorem equivalent model. This is a Norton. Now we wanna switch this to a Thevenin equivalent. Well, to do that, it's very, very simple. Using Ohm's law, you can find the voltage source. Very simple, V equals I times R. Notice what? So V equals 20 milliamps times 1K ohm. It's gonna give me a voltage source of 20 volts. And we already have our resistance of 1K. The good news is when you're switching these, all you have to do is just keep your resistor and use Ohm's law to find the rest. Very easy. So, let's see if I draw this up. Our Thevenin equivalent. It's gonna look just like this. 20 volts, 1K. And that's it, just that simple. And you do the same thing for vice versa. If I wanna find a current source, you're going to use Ohm's law. So that's all it is. Just, that's all there is to it as far as finding the steps. Let's jump to another problem to show you what this really can do. All right. For this one, we got ourselves a good one. We want to simplify this down to a single source with a single resistor. We want to find our Thevenin equivalent for this circuit or Norton, whichever one. Looking at this, a normal person might say, well, we can do mesh analysis, superposition, and maybe do a few different circuit analysis theorems. But we can do this all with just source transformation. Very easy. Right now I have two current sources and two parallel resistors and then one series resistor and one voltage source. Well, if I can get all these in one current source and I can get all these resistors in parallel, I can knock this out in two seconds. So, doing what we did earlier, let's go ahead and make this voltage source and this resistor a current source within parallel with the resistor. So, using Ohm's law, I equals V over R, it's going to be 10 volts over 2 ohms, it's going to give us 5 amps. So we have a current source of 5 amps in parallel with 2 ohms. So let's see if I can give you a visual of what we're doing. All right, so I have our model right here, and all I did was just change these two items right here. That's all I did, just this area right here. It's the only thing I converted using this source transformation. Okay, kept the same resistor, changed to a current source. Keep in mind the polarity of the voltage source when determining the current direction. So I have plus up here, arrows point in the same direction. Now looking at this, this is very, very simple. We have three current sources in parallel and then three resistors in parallel. So imagine if we had all three of these current sources side by side, all pointing the same direction, and then we had all these resistors in parallel right next to each other. Well, that's actually very simple. Anytime you have a current source going the same direction in parallel like this, all you do is add them together. 
So it would be 5 plus 3 plus 2. That would be your total current for this circuit. Now if they're going the opposite directions, like if you had this 3 upside down, it would be obviously minus 3. But that was pretty simple. And again, with uh, resistors in parallel, that's pretty simple. That's going to be 2 ohms to the 1 plus 10 ohms plus 5 ohms. And all we have to do for that one is this is all basic Ohm's law. This is nothing difficult here. So our total resistance, if we do uh, plug and chug this in our calculator with 2 ohms, 10 ohms, and 5 ohms all in parallel, gives us a resistance of 1.25 ohms. So by adding all these up, we have a current source of 10 amps and a resistance of 1.25 ohms. So this would give us a Norton equivalent circuit of, that looks something similar here, 10 amps in parallel with 1.25 ohms. Just that simple. So instead of using mesh analysis all those other ones, we're able to simplify this circuit in a matter of minutes versus taking 10 to 15 minutes to plug each other in the calculator. So that right there, or our final answer of finding a Norton equivalent circuit. Find a Thevenin, same thing we did earlier. V equals I times R. So Move the decimal place over here, be easy. So voltage source, and then a resistor, and that's 12.5 volts. Same resistor, 1.25 ohms. So I was able to find both of those almost instantaneously using this circuit, without even doing Thevenin theorem, mesh analysis, none of those guys. All right, let's do one more problem. All right, for our last problem here, we have a good one. Right now I have four AA batteries, and this one we're gonna do a source transformation on these guys, and this is gonna kind of mix in between with your battery characteristic problems too. But, this one we're gonna tackle one step at a time, but it's gonna be very easy, you'll see. First things first, let me go ahead and connect every one of these in parallel. This is actually a very common configuration, and we'll call that point A. And we'll do the same thing, hook all the negatives together. That's point B. So right there, I just connected every single one of these batteries in parallel. So right now, I have a voltage source in series with a resistor, and the same thing, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, since now we have all these in parallel, we need to go ahead and do a source transformation. We need to make this a current source versus a voltage source. So we're going to use just simple Ohm's law, where we're going to say I equals V over R for every single one of these. So it's going to be something similar like this. I'll actually put it over here. So for the first one, it's going to be I equals V over R. I'll just put it right there. So the first one is going to be 1.35 volts over, and it's 0 0.18 ohms. And that's going to give us a current of 7.5 amps. So far, so good. Second one, same thing. It's going to be 1.3 volts over 0 0.17 ohms. And that's going to give us a current of 7.65 amps. Okay, third battery is 1.32 volts over 0 0.19 ohms. That's going to give us 6. 9.5 amps. Last one. It's going to be 1.28 volts over 0 0.15 ohms. And that'll give us a current source of 8.53 amps. All right, now that we got our current sources, see if we can map this out in a circuit real quick. So for this one, it's 7.5 amps, 7.65 amps, 6.95 amps, and then 8.53 amps. And resistor, same thing, I'll put them down here to make it easy. 0 0.18, 0 0.17, 0 0.19, and 0.15. 
Now, since this is source transformation, and now we have all of our current sources in parallel, now we can just add them together. It's very simple. So I'm just going to add 7.5 amps plus 7.65 amps plus 6.95 amps plus 8.53 amps. And plug and chug that in our calculator is going to give us an answer of 30.63 amps. All right, so now we have our total current for these particular battery sets. Now we need to do the total resistance. So our internal resistance, well, since all these resistors are in parallel, you just do your parallel calculations in your calculator. So it's going to be 0.18 to the negative 1 plus 0.17 to the negative 1 plus 0.19, negative 1 plus 0.15, negative 1. And then, of course, to the negative 1 for all of these is going to give us an answer of 0 0.043 ohms, or in this case, 43 millohms. All right, so I'm going to make some room up here real quick. Let me get rid of these guys. If you're going to go ahead and make a Norton equivalent circuit for this bad boy, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be current source with your resistor in parallel, and of course, points A and point B. And we're going to put 43 milliohms. And for our total current, it's going to be 30.63 amps. And of course, we can do our Thevenin equivalent as well for those of you who like doing the Thevenin models. A, B. Good news is resistor will always stay the same. 43 milliohms. Now, this one, you do ohms all just the same. You go ahead and do your current times your resistance, and that's going to give you your voltage. So in this case, it's going to be, I'll put it right here, 30.63 amps times 43 milliohms. It's going to give you an answer of 1.31 volts. So our Thevenin equivalent is going to be 1.31 volts with a resistor of 43 milliohms. And that right there is our final answers. So that's a very easy way to do a source transformation with just AA batteries. So hopefully I gave you enough information here to be dangerous. If you have any more questions, let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.